Good morning. Excuse me if I just get a rod in the water and then we'll talk about what I'm doing in this rather <laughs> picturesque spot. Looks brilliant. Still have never caught a fish from this swim, but I'd love to one day have that bridge in the background. Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Dango's Outdoors YouTube channel. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. Now today, I'm out pike fishing on a small Yorkshire river. Now it's the same river that I actually caught my first Yorkshire barbel on. So uh, I do really like this river, but I haven't fished it for getting on two years now. I just um, had a rubbish barbel season. I think it was year before last. I actually lost a really big fish on my first cast of my first session of the new season and since then it's really just sickened me I just <laughs> I really thought that that was a Yorkshire double and I uh, haven't been back I've been fishing quite frankly easier rivers but I'm back today because I pike fished yesterday on one of my more reliable rivers and I did pretty well so I figured today I'll take a bit of a gamble and I'll come here I've never pike fished it never seen anyone pike fishing it only ever caught a couple on lures so yeah, hopefully if I rove about today with some baits, I've actually got a float on for once. Maybe we'll get some action. I don't know. It's just an exploratory, taking a gamble session since I did so well yesterday. I can afford to kind of risk a little bit. So we'll give each swim maybe half an hour, work our way back to the car and hopefully bump into a pike or two. <laughs> First swim. First swim, first cast, and we've got to take. Only very small marks in the bait. Could have been a small fish, but that's really promising. Do you like baby otters swimming through your swim? Look at it. Just staring right at me. Why are you squeaking at me? Can you hear it? Oh, under. Oh, don't swear. <laughs> Better not take my dead bait. Oh my God, my bait is actually away. Hopefully that's not the otter. Can't be, surely. But not that idiot. Or is that just a current? Oh, I can hear the otter downstream, so I think we've got to take. Uh, yep, we are away. Otter just swam through the swim, and I've got a pike take. it first time and it picked it up again. Crazy fish, <laughs> crazy. Oh, a bit of weight there, there it is. Oh, it's only small. Is 
is incredible. Just filming a baby otter going through the swim, squeaking at me, and a float goes under. And I'm like, that's not the otter, is it? But then I can hear the otter still squeaking downstream, so I'm like, that's a pike. And like I say, I must admit to maybe leaving that a little bit longer because I didn't want to be paying that fish. And an otter in my swim, it's just gonna grab it, in it? Oh, <laughs> we've got one. Oh, and I can get my picture in front of a bridge. <clears throat> A bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> Got my mackerel back. Oh, hooks are out in the net. That is brilliant. Saves me a job. Okay, that is what we came for. That is lovely. Oh, calm it, damn it. Cool colours on that pike my first proper pike from this river. I've caught a couple of really small ones just jigging for perch. But that's awesome. I'm pretty sure this is the same fish that took it first time because it went in the exact same direction under that bridge. Now that's cool. And then in our first spot, I've kind of earmarked about 10 spots on the way, on the way down here thinking, I'll drop a float in there. Yeah, no bike. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I am loving this. And what... What a bizarre event. Just, um, just saw the otter go by and then bang, a pike as well. That's incredible. Right, a few pictures and we'll get this fish back. Well, honestly, I'm still thinking, what just happened? That was, that was mad. To see the new apex predator and then catch the former <laughs> apex from here. That's uh, it's not something that happens every day. Go on, man. What's the matter with you? You're kicking. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, I've moved swims already. Uh, I must admit to giving that swim a bit longer than I thought I should, but it seems silly moving to find pike when I knew there was one there. And sure enough, I caught it, so. A bit further upstream, let's give it another go. So you've probably seen when I cast, just underarming the rig out into the main current, holding it back, just letting it swing round and find its own depth. Just off the current is where I think the pipe will be. Okay, second swim, and that float's going. Let's get down there. Pulled out a bit. Damn, get back in there quick. Well, I thought it was second time lucky for a moment there. Oh yeah. Oof. Right under the rod tip. Oh. <laughs> It, oh God, you're facing the wrong way. <laughs> it was just down here. I saw it come up as only about that big. Right, <laughs> we'll move swims. Pretty cool to get all these bites though. Oh, would have been nice to have landed it, but you know, we'll save wetting a net for a bigger fish. Okay, nothing in this spot.
So I have moved swims again. Uh, annoyingly, I got up for a recast in that last swim and my rig was in a snag and I lost my trace. Uh, it ain't too bad, you know, could have lost a lot more and I suppose that's the advantage of using heavy braid is that I can pull and something goes and you get most of your stuff back. Uh, it got me thinking if it is really snaggy down there, I'll just put on one of my single treble hook links. I'll give that a go, hopefully we won't get stuck on as much stuff. There's another one, another small one. Whoa! I think that's kind of what we're after today, smaller pike. But that's pretty cool, I've gone what? Six swims there without a bite? <laughs> Five or six anyway. Yeah, single treble, just in the scissors. Ooh. And there we are, pike number two. Still a jack, but it's cool to be getting bites. Conditions aren't great considering how sunny and windy it is. But nah, another fish. And uh, yeah, I think we'll move swims again. It took a little while to get this bite. It's nice to be catching and you gotta think if there's all these small ones, maybe there's a big one somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully I'll catch it. Now that's awesome. Loving it, great day out, glad I did this. Took a bit of a gamble and we're catching. Whoop. Okay, number two, off we go. Yeah, nice. Well, I'm not gonna lie, the wind is awful. <laughs> So you're probably getting a lot of wind noise there, unfortunately, but I literally can't do anything about it. So before we start on our next swim, which I think is eight or nine, something like that, quick show of the rig, just in case uh, anybody's relatively new to pike fishing, this is a very, very standard uh, pike float fishing rig. So you've got your trace on the end there, you know, 18 inches or so, a strong wire, that's 30 pound wire. A single size four treble in my case, but if you want to put on a, a couple of trebles, whatever, that, that's fine. I'm just finding it these days that I don't even know if I need two hooks, so I'm quite happy to just have the one on. <laughs> and then you have your float and your weight. So I like to have the weight just free running on the line. Everybody talks about how pike are so sensitive to resistance, so it makes sense to me to have that move in rather than having something that locks over the swivel. And then you just need something to separate your weight from your swivel because you've got your knot there so you don't want that weight bashing against that knot damaging it you know you don't want to strike into the fish of a lifetime and have that knot go so i've just covered it with a rubber bead or that could be a tail rubber a little bit of silicon tubing whatever it doesn't matter and then something above the weight to stop the float from banging against it and becoming damaged now 
Admittedly, that bit isn't necessarily essential, but I have in the past had floats crack down here, so I do quite like having that there. And it creates a bit of separation. You see how there's a gap between everything, and that helps to prevent tangles. A bead above the float, a lot of beads on this rig, <laughs> that stops your float from running over your stop knot because the ball on the bead is a lot thinner than the float. And then further up the line, oh, probably see that there. There's my stop knot just tied from, um, it's like feeder fishing elastic. And that really helps to, to grip onto the line and that's what sets your depth. And I like to have it about a foot or so over depth, pretty much the length of the trace plus a little bit more. So the trace, the bait and the weight are all on the bottom. There's a tight kind of bow of line going up to the float and then you get really positive takes. If the float's laying basically flat, it can move around in the current, it can do what it wants. But as soon as it cocks like that, that's a fish. If your float's already cocked, you're getting all these pulls under from the current and you're not sure is that a fish, is it not? But if it's laying flat and then it goes down, you know that's a fish. So that's my thinking anyway. And bait wise today, it has just been small sea baits that's pretty much what i use a lot of the pike fishing uh, i've caught them today on mackerel herring and now i'm going to try a bluey and if i catch on all three it kind of proves that really the priority is putting it in front of fish it's not necessarily the bait itself i can't see a hungry pike turning down whatever you put in front of them but i like a bait that's got a bit of like oil and blood in it because you can imagine it seeping off downstream and bringing pike up that's uh, that's the theory anyway nice strong main line either a really strong mono or in my case i've got braid on this one yeah all works right let's get this bait out there i'm gonna have my lunch i mean i don't know if we're gonna fish too many more swims because i planned on not being out too long today you know got work to do at home diy den he's needed back at home in the loft i've been bored in my loft and it's been the Man, the job of a lifetime, taking me about a year. <laughs> oh man, I'll get it done. <laughs> right, let's get back on the move then. Nothing in this swim. Here's something interesting. When I started, that bluey was a straight line. I cut it straight across and you can see it's been whittled back by crayfish. There are definitely crayfish in here. I didn't know how active it'd be in winter, but clearly they're still out there. Well, a lot of promise in this swim but not a lot result. I think I've got maybe two more spots and then we'll call it a day. No luck here, so let's go try our last swim. Well, here we are, scene of a crime where I lost that big barbel. Uh, nearly two years ago now and it's still one of my most <laughs> cutting fish losses ever so let's hope we can make up for it with a good pike. The sun is just about to set there 
and I said I wanted to be in the car at three. It's now past half four or something, so yeah, I got a bit carried away myself, but it's been really fun fishing here, getting back to proper roving with a float rod. I must admit to looking at a couple of the swims and thinking oh, I'd love to have two baits out in alarms now, real, really cover that water, but you know, it has worked. We've caught two fish, I mean, as good as caught three. I mean, it could have even been four if I'd got my act together and <laughs> hit a few of those takes better, but you know, it's been really nice and I'm sure if I keep fishing this stretch every now and again, eventually I'll bump into something better there. There can't be this many pike here and there not be a good one somewhere. At least, at least that's my thinking. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Hopefully you have. Leave a thumbs up if you had. Subscribe for more to come. And yeah, I'm sure I'll be back down here, maybe before the season closes. If not, it's in my back pocket for a future, future session. Yeah, fantastic. Hopefully you're catching loads of fish as well. And I'll see you again soon.